In this video, we're going to talk about transformers. So we're not talking about Optimus Prime or anything like that, but an electrical device that's commonly found in an AC plug or an adapter and things like that. So what's the purpose of a transformer? A transformer can be used to increase or decrease an AC voltage. A step-up transformer increases the AC voltage. A step-down transformer decreases the AC voltage. So let me give an example of one. So this is the circuit diagram or the electrical symbol for a transformer. And so there's two sets of coils. On the left we have the primary coil, on the right the secondary coil. So notice that the right side has more coils than the left side. This indicates that we have a step-up transformer. Now let's say that the number of coils on the left side is 100. So that's the primary coils. And the number of coils on the right side is 1,000. So that's the secondary coil. So the secondary coil has 1,000 turns, and the primary coil has 100 turns. Now let's say if the primary voltage is 12 volts, what do you think the secondary voltage will be? It's proportional to the number of coils. So notice that the number of coils increases by a factor of 10. 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. So the secondary voltage is going to be 10 times higher. 12 times 10 is 120 volts. Now let's say the primary current, which we'll call IP, let's say it's 10 amps. What do you think the primary, I mean the secondary current will be in the second coil? Now, as the number of turns increases as you go from left to right, primary to secondary, the voltage will increase, but the current will decrease. So the current's going to decrease by a factor of 10. 10 amps divided by 10 will give us a secondary current of 1 amp. Now, what is the power on the left side? Power is voltage times current. So if we multiply the primary voltage by the primary current, 12 times 10 is 120. So the input power, or the power in the primary coil, is 120 watts. Now for the secondary coil, or the output power, it's going to be 120 times 1, which is 120. So notice that the input power is equal to the output power. The power absorbed by the transformer is equal to the power delivered by the transformer. And this makes sense because energy must be conserved. The rate at which energy is transferred into the transformer has to equal the rate at which energy is transformed or transferred out of the transformer. So we can come up with an equation that can relate these variables together. So we said that as the number of coils increases, the voltage increases, the current decreases, but the power remains the same. So NS divided by NP, that's the ratio between the turns in the secondary coil compared to the turns in the primary coil, that's equal to VS over VP because these two are proportional. But this is equal to IP over IS because the current is inversely related to N and V. And then the input power is equal to the output power, which means that the primary voltage times the primary current is equal to the secondary voltage times the secondary current. So for transformers, these are the main equations that you need to be familiar with. Now let's work on some problems. You can pause the video if you want to and try the problem. A transformer has 400 primary turns and 1800 secondary turns. The input voltage is 12 volts and the output current is 3 amps when connected across a resistor. What is the output voltage? So let's start with a picture. So this is going to be the primary coil and here we're going to have the secondary coil. Now the secondary coil is connected across a resistor and the primary coil is connected to a source voltage.
Now, the primary coil has 400 turns, and the secondary coil has 1,200 turns. So VP represents the input voltage, and VS represents the output uh, voltage, or the secondary voltage. IP represents the current flown in the primary coil, or the input current. IS represents the output current, or the current in the secondary coil. Now we're given the input voltage, or the primary voltage, that's 12V. We don't know the output voltage, and we don't know the input current. However, we do know the output current, and so that is 3 amps. So let's start by finding the output voltage. So we can use this formula. NP divided by NS is equal to VP over VS. Now I need to make one small correction. For some reason I put 1200 as opposed to 1800. So in this example, NP is 400, NS is 1800. VP is 12 volts, and let's calculate VS. So let's cross multiply. 1800 times 12 is 21,600, and that's equal to 400 times VS. So let's divide both sides by 400. So 21,600 divided by 400 will give us a source voltage, or rather a secondary voltage of 54 volts. So that's the voltage across the coil, the secondary coil, and it's also the voltage across the resistor. Now let's move on to part B. Determine the input current. So we can use this formula. NP over NS is equal to IS over IP, since the current and the number of turns in the coils are inversely related. So NP is 400. And S is 1800. IS is 3. And now let's calculate IP. So 1800 times 3, that's 5400. And so that's going to equal to 400 times IP. So let's divide both sides by 400. And this will give us a current of 13.5 amps. C. What is the value of the resistor? So how can we calculate the value of the resistor? Well, we could use V equals IR. In this case, we need to use the secondary voltage and the secondary current. So VS is 54 volts. The current in the secondary coil is 3 amps. So now we can calculate R. It's 54 divided by 3. So the resistance is 18 ohms. Now part D, how much power is dissipated by the resistor? So we can use I squared R. The current that flows in the resistor is 3 amps and the value of the resistance itself is 18 ohms. So 3 squared is 9, 9 times 18 is 162. So 162 watts is dissipated by the resistor. Now what is the power in the primary coil and in the secondary coil? So the input power or the power in the primary coil is equal to VP times IP. So that's 12 volts times 13.5 amps. So this is equal to 162 watts. So the power that was absorbed by the input coil or the primary coil is equal to the power dissipated by the resistor. And the power delivered by the secondary coils must be the same too. So if we take Vs and multiply it by Is, we should get the same answer. So 54 volts times 3 amps is also equal to 162 watts. Number 2. An ideal 100 watt transformer has an input current of 20 amps and an output voltage of 12 volts. Determine the input voltage. So let's start with a picture. 
So right now, we don't know if we have a step up or step down transformer because we don't know the relative amount of turns in the secondary coil compared to the primary coil. So I'm just going to draw a generic transformer. And let's say it's connected across a resistor in the secondary coil. Now the input current, IP, is equal to 20 amps. NP, we know it's 200 turns, according to part C. We don't have the value of NS, and we don't know the value for IS. Now we do have the value for VS, the output voltage, that's 12 volts, but we don't know VP. So how can we figure out VP? How can we determine the input voltage? Now keep in mind, we know it's a 100 watt transformer. And we could use that fact to calculate the input voltage. So the power of the transformer is going to equal voltage times current. So 100 watts is equal to VP times a current of 20. So we need to divide both sides by 20. So 100 divided by 20 is 5. So the input voltage is 5. Now we could use the same formula to calculate the output current. So it's going to equal Vs times Is. So this is 100, Vs is 12, and the secondary current is going to be 100 divided by 12. And so the secondary current is 8.33 amps. So now we can focus on part C. How many secondary turns does the transformer have if there are 200 primary turns? So let's use this formula. NP over NS is equal to VP over VS. So NP in this example is 200. Our goal is to calculate NS. VP is 5 and VS is 12. So 200 times 12 is 2400. And that's going to equal 5 times NS. So we need to divide this by 5. So NS is 2400 divided by 5, which works out to be 480 turns. So that's how many turns we have in the secondary coil. So would you say this is a step up transformer or a step down transformer? We have 200 turns in the primary coil and 480 turns in the secondary coil. And also notice that the voltage increased from 5 to 12. So based on that fact, we know it's a step up transformer. So anytime that NS is greater than NP, which means that VS will be greater than VP, when these conditions are met, we have a step up transformer. And if we have the reverse, let's say if NP is greater than NS or if VP is greater than VS, then this is going to be a step down transformer. So in this example, NS is greater than NP and VS is greater than VP. So we have this situation in this problem. Number three, a transformer has an input voltage of 120 volts and an input current of 5 amps. The output voltage is 11.9 volts and the output current is 49 amps. How much power was absorbed by the primary coil? So let's draw a picture. By the way, do we have a step up or a step down transformer? Notice that we're going from 120 to 11.9. So this is a step down transformer. So I need to put more coils on the left side than the right side. So the circuit should look something like this. So this is 120 volts on this side and the current is 5 amps. On the right side, the voltage is 11.9 volts and the current is 49 amps. So how much power was absorbed by the primary coil? So the input power 
is going to equal VP times IP. So that's 120 volts times 5 amps. Now 120 times 5 is 600 watts. So that's how much power was absorbed by the primary coil on the left side. Now what about the power delivered by the secondary coil? So it's going to equal Vs times Is. So the secondary voltage is 11.9, that's the output voltage. And the secondary current is 49 amps. 11.9 times 49 gives us a power of 583.1 watts. So notice that this transformer is not an ideal transformer. The power is not exactly the same. Most transformers are 99% efficient. Some are even better than that, but it should be close. So to calculate the efficiency, we're going to take the output power divided by the input power and then multiply it by 100%. So the output power is 583.1 watts. The input power is 600. And so if we divide those two numbers, 583.1 divided by 600, that's 0.9718, and then multiply that by 100. So this particular transformer is 97.2% efficient, which is not bad. But there is some amount of energy that's lost in this example. So no transformers are 100% efficient, but there are some that are 99% efficient, which is good enough.